Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am joined today very graciously by Scott from Battlefield Vegas. We did, we just posted a video about this T-62 and going through all the guns on it, and it was really cool. But I think it's important to point out to people that this isn't just about like, oh, we're going to go drive over cars and blow up stuff. There's a tremendous amount of work and a tremendous amount of very real history that goes into making something like this happen. How many T-62s are there that are operational in private hands in the U.S.? To like, our knowledge, one. This, this one. one. Yeah. yeah. And you are the guy primarily responsible for making that happen here, right? Yeah, well, obviously I couldn't have done it without the help of everyone on my team and those guys that supported us, but yeah, that's, that's essentially what happened. So where did this thing come from? How does a T-62 get into the U.S.? Um, so this story, the story of this tank is quite long, but uh, obviously it was a Russian origin, Soviet time, and Syria brought several batches of T-62, some directly out of the factory, some were used prior. Uh, our best guess is that this came out of the factory, thanks to something Nick pointed out earlier, but um, at that point we're not too sure, but we do know for sure that it went on to serve with the Syrians in the, the Valley of the Tears in 73. I think you said earlier that the guns dated 71. So Correct. it's like a 71-72 production gun. Yeah, tank. it's a, it's a 72A, but uh, and we're all thinking, okay, it's a 1972, but when we, we, we learned a lot more about this tank that is not written and hasn't been spoken of because not everybody completely strips a tank to a million pieces and then starts going through it. So we found evidence and tags and whatnot, and we actually found a 1971 year model on the gun. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> as far as the history goes, um, it was in the Valley of the Tears, obviously the big tank battle everybody knows about, and this survived that battle, notwithstanding some damage, of course, and it later went on to stay with service in the Syrian military, and then it went to uh, Lebanon in 1982. Okay. At that point in Lebanon, it was captured by the Israelis and held in various scrapyards and whatnot that they had. And an interesting side note is this red writing, yeah. along with many other markings on the tank, is actually Israeli, uh, okay. he Hebrew. So the Israelis got all the tanks that they captured and they added their own serial numbers on there. And you'll see those on the front and the back. But what this writing is here uh, to the best research that I've done and been helped with is this is directions of where this tank will go because it has been earmarked for a Tehran conversion. Okay, so the Israelis kept and used captured Soviet equipment. Oh yeah, oh well and truly. Um, but I'm guessing because of that late time period, although this was marked, yeah, it's, it's definitely suitable to be converted to a Tehran, very little damage, uh, for whatever reason they didn't. Uh, the way this tank began its private life was this was the only Syrian T-62 that was imported by the AF Budge collection during the 80s uh, into the UK. The same gentleman that imported uh, that large batch of M50 Shermans that we covered recently. Uh, although he imported, I believe, about 12 M50s, some various other vehicles, but he only got the one T-62. Okay. So from that point, it went from the AF Budge collection to various museums, including Littlefield Collection. Um, and we brought it off a gentleman back east. And now, at that time, nobody had really done any kind of restoration to it. It ran, but it was in very poor disrepair. And it was demilled. So at Battlefield, we've done a ground up full restoration and live fire gun. Nice. There's a cool thing on the front that I want to show people. All right. All right, so you said you remilitarized this. You put a brand new barrel on this thing, right? Uh, brand new is a stretch, but we put a good, <laughs> a good barrel in it. I suppose it's uh, got a little bit of wear and tear on it there, doesn't it? Correct. So we actually have two T-62s. The other one was one of Saddam's Republican Guard tanks that was a Gulf War bringback. Hmm. That tank fortunately had a reasonably good barrel in it. Um, and we basically conducted a gun swap as part of our remanufacturing process. Okay. So that damage you see right there came from Gulf War One. Okay. Um, there was some cool original battle damage to the original gun, yeah? Correct. So the original gun, the reason that we couldn't use it is, I believe, it was an airburst round. But when the tank came to us, we found a large uh, bowed out section of the barrel, and it actually had a hole. And uh, <laughs> a piece of the airburst round 
went right through the barrel inside and then came back outside and it was traversed right over this space right here. And at first glance, this was all just rusted and we didn't think anything of it, but I've learned twice now through tank restoration that um, even the tiniest little pinhole can mean serious damage. Hmm. We later found out that that airburst round didn't stop right here. So yeah, you can see the hole in the Correct. upper plate right here. There's a hole right here and there's splash all around it. Yeah. Uh, hot, hot plasma or metal frag. Well, the warhead from the airburst round actually went through the whole entire glacius plate or the front armor, if you will, down into the housing for the track idling adjuster and then went down into the mechanism of the track adjuster wow. and locked the whole thing up. So uh, we cover this on our channel as well, but uh, there is footage of us. We have the whole track adjuster glowing red and it was a three or four day process trying to pull out this track adjusting mechanism, which is essentially worm gears and, you know, but it was just all locked up from that one did, round. Did you know that was the, the reason that you couldn't get it off at no, the time? No, it was not. We had no idea. Uh -huh. We hadn't done the other side, so we just assumed it was normally that hard mm. until we pulled it out and we found a big copper wad, big copper slug right in the middle of the worm gear, just jammed wow. everything up. Huh. So you mentioned your channel. Mm -hmm. You guys actually have a YouTube channel documenting the restoration of this and other vehicles, right? Correct. Um, That's super darn cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, we have a gentleman that came in recently and um, his name is Dimitri and he began as a scale modeler. And as we all know, some of those guys are a bit fanatic with detail. Dimitri came to us looking for some detail off some of our tanks for one of his builds and uh, we couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> and I said, you know, why don't you just, if you love this stuff, why don't you work on a one-to-one -one scale, you know? And uh, he just, he really wanted to be here. He was tremendous help. So he got involved and he began to film everything that we did because uh, we, we can't, you know, we're too busy working. And we've grown into a, we're upcoming, but it's a growing channel and um, that's fantastic. Yeah. Restoration passion. That kind of says it all. Like the yeah. point isn't let's go run over a car. Mm -hmm. Like I keep referencing back to it is like there's real work and real history and real mechanics. And, and there's a tremendous amount to learn from digging into a vehicle and the sort of depth that you guys have with one like this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's, it's, um, yeah, again, our main focus is the restoration and uh, we do a lot of walk around videos in extreme depth, a lot of nuts and bolts, how things work. We do also cover off on, um, again, we're one of the very few who do full operational capability and uh, a lot of people here aren't, correction, a lot of people aren't here to cover that. So Restoration Passion covers the whole restoration, including what it takes to make a demilitarized main gun live again. That's fantastic. And you can see all of that on our channel. Correct me if I'm wrong, but even a lot of high-end museums will typically restore a vehicle mostly visually because it's going to be a static display. So you want to make sure it looks right and the paint's right. But the internals, meh. But you guys, how you like all the electronics in this thing work. The, the electric uh, turret traverse works. You've actually got the solenoid firing mechanisms for the coax gun mm -hmm. all set up and working. And that's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's um, again, it's, we have a really rare opportunity with the way our business is structured. And again, that there's, there's many tank restorers out there from varying degrees of just a really nice paint job of a static display to operating and driving. And some guys go to extreme detail to get that all original finish, but for various restrictions of wherever they live or where they might be located, they can't do the main armament. So my opinion, that's like restoring a car and not ever being able to drive it. We're restoring a tank and the tank wasn't designed to drive, the tank was designed to carry this thing. Right. So we are incredibly fortunate enough to bring every single aspect of the tank back to life. So on this one here, we, we've, we went through and restored night vision capability. We've got crew commander's target designator override function working. You know, That's um, so cool. <laughs> the auto eject sequence works. We're just ironing out a few issues on there right now. But, um, you know, I feel very fortunate that uh, we are one of the very few uh, at the top level that can take a tank uh, fully to its operational capability. That is fantastic. Yeah. So thank you very much thank for, you, man. My for pleasure. the access. This was a real hoot to, uh, to drive, to shoot. 
and uh, definitely I will have a link to Restoration Passion down in the description text. Uh, check them out for like a seriously nerdy level view of vehicle restoration, which I know a bunch of you guys are going to be interested in. Thanks for watching. Thank you.